this is a magical film and one often hears about the magic of cinema. Um, what was it actually like behind the scenes? I mean, how much preparation did you have to put into your roles? Well, originally I studied a lot about lycanthropy, thinking I was going to take it very, very, very seriously. And, uh, and I, I did, I thought I've got to do something to, to prepare for this, but actually in the end I, I really just thought what it was like to be a teacher and I, I based it on upon an old teacher of mine. So it wasn't really that uh, it was necessary to know much about being, being a wolf. Um, and then the, the rest was done for you, really, by like all this kind of stuff. Just it, it been living. It never felt like a film set, particularly because everything's been there for so long, and often you couldn't even see the camera. And uh, you just, in, you know, I mean, I, I've been in it for eight, nine years, and um, it just felt like home after a while. Well, I kind of read, I read all the b books and I saw the movies, so I was up to date because I hadn't seen any of that. And um, I kind of thought I was at boarding school at Beedells, and uh, you were put in dorms with all age groups, so you. you you always had a dorm boss that was like 17. And there was a really cool dorm boss of mine called Alexa Reed. It's like, like a midget ginger and like really naughty and fun. And, and also a bit clumsy actually. And like I, that, that welcoming thing. And like, you know, she's just, you know, she's always winking at Harry and she's, you know, having a bit of fun with him. Like trying to, you know, as if he's her peer completely. And uh, I just remember that girl that made all, like made me feel welcome. Like when you got to school, you know, showed you all the drinking spots. I like helped you with boy problems and you were 13 and she was 17. Like, that was huge, mm. you know. So you sort of took on the, uh, the naughty godmother role. Yeah. Right? How did it feel? I mean, you really are tasked with bringing the call. Cool. How did that sort of responsibility lie with you? I didn't really notice, notice it till, till, um, till the premiere, the first one, and then I was really terrified. From then on, <laughs> I was like, this is really big. <laughs> this is huge. And, and then I started, you know, when you receive all the fan mail and you see a few little kids' faces that recognise you and you're like, okay. I've got a lot of responsibility now, great. Yeah. So um, that was a bit scary. <laughs> what is the sort of level of pressure from the fans? I mean, there, there's obviously well, fan fiction, you know, lots of fan mail. Do you feel sort of a responsibility or a pressure from that? Well, you do because they're mainly children, yeah. you know. Um, um, but that's a, that's a wonderful thing to be so adored by so many children from all over the world and get yeah. the most incredible fan mail. Uh, and that, that I, I read as much as I can, especially Japanese fan mail. I was just about <laughs> to say that. <laughs> the paper they yeah, use. It's almost, yeah. the keep, keep doing it, Japan. It's great. Oh, but like, it's so, <laughs> and so little gifts beautiful. of origami. And, yeah, you know. and, 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 and like stickers, like beautiful sushi stickers I've had. And just yeah. and like the, 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 what they say in the English, you know, it's like, I wish, you know, at the end, a good health and luck and love and all this, you know, kind of, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, love, I love Japanese, but I always yeah, open that yeah, first. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, hi, my name is Miyuki, I am 12. It looks like that, just right. So, so, like. so neat. Oh, <laughs> Do, does it feel strange to be loved by a country or by, 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 by a, a country? Planet, really? <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if you've even been to Japan, but of course you're. you're no, loved I never have. By, I've never been. Yeah, yeah, and yet loved by millions of people there. Yeah, that would be, be wonderful. In terms of the films, your, your characters have, you know, we don't want to spoil too much, but, you know, it's, it's a slightly awkward um, uh, final chapter mm -hmm. for your characters. Um, did you ever think about trying to negotiate your way into sort of the ability to go on if they wanted to uh, extend the plot? Uh, no, well, we always knew that it was never going to go on because, yeah. you, know, you know, Joe only wrote those books and, uh, you know, I think our feeling was that at least we made it into the final book and into the final film when so many fell by the wayside. So, um, you know, it had been terrible to go out in the fifth one or the sixth one. And so, you know, we're still there right, clinging on to life at the end. And what was you, each of your final scenes? It was us together, but we didn't know, it was, I didn't know it was my last scene. So usually when you finish a scene, everyone like, and that's a wrap for, uh, you know, David Thewlis. And, you know, you have a moment, you know, you might go to the pub with everyone, you know, you have a moment with people. I, I didn't get that. I, yeah. They thought I was going to come back next week. So no, I, I shot something after you. <laughs> <laughs> I did get the applause. Oh, amazing. They, 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 they were like, I think you're, no, actually, it's not your last day. No, it's not. No, it's yeah. not. No, 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 I think you're going to be back next week. For So I had a kind of anticlimax of it, and I really, I thought I was going to be back. Are you engaged in therapy to try and deal with yeah, it? Yeah, trauma. <laughs> every, like, every Monday. Yeah. And, and how's it working out? It's okay. Good. Still cry in the night. At least you can get it from Japan to help out with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and what was your final scene? The, what was the cheeky final scene you did shoot? It was a scene in the Great Hall. And um, in fact, they played a, a trick on us. I was, I was having to catch a flight to Berlin to start on this, this other film. And it was getting very late, and I had to get, because I was shooting the next morning, I had to get on this flight. And um, the, um, they started setting up this Steadicam shot in the Great Hall just before I was about to go. And I was like complaining to Mark Williams, going, they can't, they can't do this, they can't. I, you know, in fact, I had finished. And then 500 kids all came to the Great Hall. Then I was like, I don't even know what this scene is now. What are we shooting? What are we, this, isn't, this doesn't happen. And they brought me and Alan Rickman to the front. And I was like, why is it, I'm not in Alan's shot. 
and then they announced that me and Alan had finished. And, and we got the kids, and this, the whole, this is my ending. <laughs> 500 kids erupted. And actually, Alan Rickman went, they've kept me here all day for this. <laughs> 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 oh, cheer up, Alan. <laughs>